Are you unknowingly priming your blood to clot every day through tiny leaks from your gut that slip bacterial toxins into your bloodstream? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Today we're examining how endotoxin, lipopolysaccharide, or LPS, can trigger the same clotting cascades seen in sepsis and why this helps explain strokes and heart attacks in people with normal test results. I'm Ethan Foster, and we'll keep this direct and practical. I'm Alara Skye. You'll hear how researchers traced LPS from gut bacteria to rapid coagulation, how everyday habits make exposure common, and which simple steps, limited to what the article states, can help you lower your load and keep blood flowing smoothly. Let's set the scene. Blood clots should seal wounds, not block oxygen to your brain or heart. Yet clots increasingly appear in people without classic risk factors. The emerging driver is endotoxin crossing a weakened gut barrier, entering your circulation, and switching on clotting and inflammatory pathways long before symptoms appear. The mechanistic evidence is clear. A Journal of Biological Chemistry study showed that LPS from bacteria, such as E. coli, directly activates clotting proteins, triggering clot formation even without injury. One E. coli type was especially potent, kicking off a chain reaction that mirrors sepsis, fast, coordinated, and dangerous when it happens inside healthy vessels. The structure of LPS matters. When LPS molecules cluster into small aggregates, they create highly effective docking sites for clotting proteins. Single, isolated molecules do far less. That's why tiny amounts of bacterial debris in blood can have outsized effects, while purified lab forms may look weaker under different conditions. Timing matters too. In animal models, clotting rose within hours of exposure to E. coli as the coagulation sequence switched on step by step. The researchers also showed it doesn't take a full infection. Fragments from dead bacteria circulating in blood are enough to recruit clotting proteins and build microclots. So how does this reach you in everyday life? Bioenergetic researcher Georgi Dinkoff points out that LPS can rise after ordinary meals. Even healthy people can experience post-meal activation of plasma clotting factors within minutes, and that heightened state can persist for hours, repeated again and again across the day. Modern habits make that exposure hard to avoid. Seed oils, ultra-processed foods, alcohol, and chronic stress weaken your gut barrier and promote endotoxemia. Once in your bloodstream, LPS pushes signaling like serotonin and excessive nitric oxide toward patterns that damage vessel linings, promote platelet clumping, and restrict oxygen delivery. Conventional care during sepsis leans on high-dose glucocorticoids to suppress inflammation. But that doesn't address the endotoxin source. As noted in the article, some glucocorticoids may even promote clotting. This helps explain why sepsis mortality remains high despite aggressive treatment that focuses downstream rather than at the gut origin. Multiple research lines connect LPS to broader disease. Reviews link LPS to chronic systemic inflammation via cytokine activation. Genetic analyses associate endotoxin-related patterns with higher odds of thromboembolism and stroke. Diagnostic updates show that older LPS tests miss low-grade exposure, while newer molecular tools detect its fingerprints across immune and metabolic pathways. In septic shock, the same cascade simply runs faster and harder. Endotoxin activates white cells and coagulation simultaneously. Circulation falters, and microclots spread. Another finding. Clots can bind LPS as a short-term defense. Helpful at first, but with repeated exposure, you see thicker blood, more microclots, and reduced oxygen delivery. Let's move to actions, strictly within the article's guidance. First, rebuild your gut barrier with easy-to-digest foods. Quality carbohydrates that you tolerate well can support a healthier environment. But there's a fiber paradox. If your gut is irritated, high fiber or resistant starch foods can worsen endotoxin. Start with options like fruit and white rice, then layer in root vegetables, beans, and whole grains only as tolerance returns. Second, 
neutralize endotoxin before it enters your bloodstream. Use natural binders named in the article. A daily raw carrot salad with a small amount of coconut oil and vinegar can help. Small amounts of activated charcoal a few times per week can also bind and escort bacterial wastes out of your system. Third, support intestinal repair with specific nutrients identified in the article. Niacinamide and vitamin E. Niacinamide supports cellular energy. Vitamin E helps reduce oxidative stress. The point is straightforward. Reinforce the gut lining and blunt the inflammatory impact of LPS. Fourth, pay attention to hormone and metabolic support as described. Bioidentical progesterone can bind LPS and reduce its toxicity. Optimal thyroid function and adequate stomach acid help keep gut bacteria in check. When metabolism is steadier, you neutralize endotoxin more efficiently and maintain smoother blood flow. Fifth, eliminate hidden sources of gut irritation, the article calls out. Avoid seed oils and ultra-processed foods, skip alcohol, and steer clear of long-term fasting that stresses digestion. Replace seed oils with butter, ghee, or tallow. Eat consistent, balanced meals that stabilize your energy rather than swinging you between extremes. A quick synthesis ties cause to effect. Your gut barrier weakens, LPS leaks, clotting proteins activate, and microclots form. With repeated exposure, blood stays primed to clot. Strengthen the barrier, bind and remove toxins, and support metabolism, and you lower the signals that push platelets and clotting factors into overdrive. If you're asking how this connects to sudden cardiovascular events in people who look healthy, this is the bridge. Low-grade endotoxemia links silent gut irritation to inflammation, platelet activation, and clotting risk that standard screens may not flag until late. Let's close with a concise plan aligned to the article. Choose easy-to-digest staples you tolerate, use the raw carrot salad daily, and small activated charcoal doses a few times weekly. Prioritize niacinamide and vitamin E. Consider progesterone under appropriate guidance support thyroid and stomach acid, and remove seed oils, ultra-processed foods, alcohol, and prolonged fasting. Your practical challenge, for the next seven days, swap seed oils and alcohol for simple, easy-to-digest meals. Add a daily raw carrot salad, and note how your energy, digestion, and post-meal steadiness feel by day three and day seven. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.